Hello and welcome back to another fantastic episode. You missed last week because, well, I didn't film anything. That's why. <laughs> it's about that simple. Now you may notice the territory is actually finished. It's on the road, registered, done. Uh, I might have got that done in my spare time between everything else just to get it done. Um, but I will walk you through what has happened after I got it fixed and why the hell I want rid of it and why it's for sale currently. So, uh, um, but yes, I'll give you this update as a bonus episode, uh, but I don't quite have my ducks lined up for more XW content or tank related because I mean, I've got a few irons in the fire, but not ready to come out and make a brilliant episode. Like, I'm not quite ready on the roof because the roof that I've got haven't quite finished bare metaling it yet. I will show it to you and, um, you know, show that progress is being made, but you just haven't quite got the stuff ready to throw it, you know, have an episode happening. Um, so, we'll show you what happened with this and how it turned out. And uh, I'll tell you that there is stuff in the works. Right, so we've got some ducks lined up for this, but they're not ready to run out of the nest yet. So, I'll show you what's going on with that. Uh, slight tank update for those playing at home. I've put the, because this is, oh my god, heavy. I'll put the back, like, once upon a time, long, long before times, this was actually supposed the front visors in these tanks is nearly 40 millimeters thick of just straight armor plate. Um, but of course, finding these early visors, um, you actually got a better chance of winning the lotto than finding these. I'm not even joking about that. So I've made mine uh, hollow because it takes an insane amount of weight out of them. And yes, yeah, so I've made them all that down, done all the details. It's interesting that plate was scratched quite badly when it was kicking around. I've made my handle. I've just got to drill through and then put the little collar in there like that one. And then that can go in the tank. Tank, tank, tank. The, probably the last thing I did on this, if I'm wrong, you can tell me. Um, I made the fake gun barrel, which turned out beautiful. Uh, you might notice the tank's in a slightly different position because I fired it up the other day and worked out that the fuel has gone off, which smoked us out quite badly. Um, but there's not that much fuel in this, it doesn't matter. And I've made the grouser racks, on this side anyway, and welded up all the, you wanna talk about something that took some time, they all look like that. And I've since welded them all up, ground them all down, made them all smooth, and then got the angle iron and notched all the angle iron, and then drilled all the holes. Yes, that is a lot of holes, and they all have to be evenly spaced to take the grousers. Now these go on the tracks, you take that bolt out, they come apart, and they mount here across one track pad every five lengths. Um, so, grouser racks on. That's one of the Australian modifications, well at least these ones are. And you know, there's a bit of a discussion about how they welded them on, but I've had a discussion with my one of my favorite tank, tank chummies, and pretty much it was down to who the hell was welding it on in the day, depending on how they went on. Um, so yes, the grouser rack is on this side. Those rivets, all the bolts have been welded and made it look like rivets, so that's all done. This roof, roof, uh, is coming along. It is just taking a lot of uh, deoxidine and rust converter stuff. So it was all, had acrylic paint on it. So we scraped all that off down to primer because as anybody who loves acrylic paint, knows that paint stripper turns it just to this disgusting runny mess which is why I don't like paint, uh, acrylic paint that much um, some people love it I don't I'm not one of those people so is it gonna focus maybe not anyway so it's pitted but once it's like that and super clean we'll then coat it in epoxy take the roof skin off then we'll go over to the car and that one off and then use some of the frame from this one to fix the frame on that one and then we can put the skin on the roof of that and then that car will have a new roof well not a new roof a new old roof so i'm now going to skip straight over to the territory and tell you a tale well what can i say about the white whale it is actually looking quite good um so 
me and you pull it which is a you pull your own parts wrecking yard here in Adelaide have become quite friendly I put a so the driver's door the guard and the bonnet came from the wreckers uh, I think the bonnet was 101 the guard was 92 and the door was 124 and the mirror was $49 that wasn't too bad uh, and I got a pillar cut from one of my other favorite wrecking yards limousine and I did a full sectional repair in the pillar got it all done had a new windscreen fitted got the other uh, got someone in to take the old windscreen out luckily because it was glass everywhere and he disposed of it and a new windscreen in got a new cow panel here well this half anyway because they're in two halves original wipers new wiper blades um yes I had to get a mirror because it was all broken that is that's actually a rattle can if you want to talk about um because you can buy two pack paint in a rattle can so it's got like a special doodad that punches in the bottom and it mixes the hardener in you don't get very long with the rattle can like 24 hours but um so the guard door and bonnet were straight from the wreckers and they've got dents on them but they do blend in really well with the vehicle because not only are they the correct color but the rest of the car has little dings and wax all over it so it's actually gone rather well now i also <laughs> bought on ebay one of the door lock kits to re repair all of the door locks so the car now locks and unlocks uh, which is a, another incredibly common fault and i was going to film it but i thought eh, everybody under the sun already knows how to do that you just pull the lock catch out pull the little mechanism part change the little plastic white gear in there with the, the spiral gear on it put another one in put it back together and job's done um, and that allows the car to be locked and unlocked so um, nothing has changed in here except it's a bit cleaner and yeah my join was three I hate Ford and them going to stickers for ID tags stupid absolutely stupid but the cut was through here just above here yeah just there somewhere so I had to be super careful with the tags and then when I painted them I masked them up so it actually doesn't look too bad you wouldn't actually and I think the join was somewhere about here and then the blend is up here and it's you know it's just a rattle can paint job so don't expect miracles um, but runs drives stops goes and then <laughs> ah, it's seedy past came back to haunt me you might notice there's an axle here you might notice the miss it a bit missing out of the end of it that's the cv joint and that's the bit that goes there's a, obviously two joints on an axle and then that's imagine the gearbox and engines over this way uh so i was backing it out one night to turn it around to fix the car uh change out the door locks and just backing it out gently and i hear a pop and then suddenly a grinding noise and then no forward or backwards because it's all drive and it's obviously no limited slip diffs so as soon as one of the wheels is no longer doing anything it's not got any forward or backwards so this thing was rattling around and it sheared the end clean off there it is stuck in the hub um that could not be removed for love nor money so if you see that sitting there and there's a wheel on there you take a calculated guess that there is a new one on it uh and while i was there and i had the whole right hand corner apart and i'm talking all of it apart i replaced the radius rod the ball joints the lower control arm the upper bushings the upper ball joints all of it everything on the right hand front is all brand new and a new hub new bearing and a new axle coming to almost what i paid for the whole car <laughs> so one of the bonus things is uh there's a brilliant shop like two seconds from here called car parts plus it, it would be one of the best automotive car parts stores in all of south australia it is very old school you got four guys behind the counter and they know their stuff and if you like your holdens and fords or anything like that nearly everything is kept on the shelf like 
I need an axle. There was one on the shelf. I need a lower and upper control arms on the shelf. I need a ball joint on the shelf. I need a hub for an all-wheel drive, front-wheel drive, all-wheel drive, front axle for an 05 territory on the shelf. Everything was on the shelf. And it's pretty much the same with anything Falcon related or a holder related. Every When I rebuilt the front end in the XB, everything was on the shelf. I, you know, you pay your money and you get a box of bits. They are just incredible, guys. I cannot emphasize how much you should go to Car Parts Plus if you're in the southern area of Adelaide. They are the best. Don't go to Super Cheap or anything like that. If you need your car parts, you need people who actually know what on earth you're on about and actually can do a good job. Go there because they're awesome. Also, I get along with the boss extremely well, and he actually came here after I bought all the stuff. <laughs> I think he was just coming out to hang out, um, and he actually helped me change all this out. And a couple of times, he actually ran back to his shop, which was like eight o'clock at night, and one of the ball joints I'd bought was wrong, so he went back, swapped it for another, swapped it for the right one, came back and got that, and then I needed circuit pliers and didn't have any. He run a, like the shop's only two seconds away, but he was just, oh my god, helpful. Um, I can't thank him enough. He was just, I just, cannot just, you know, when somebody is just so good, you just like, it was really fun because we were working on this till like twelve thirty at night. Um, but we got it done, got it fixed, got it drivable. Um, so my panel beating life here tells me a tale that when this was damaged, which, you know, it took a hit all the way across here and up and into the pillar and across that way. And that was a fair hit. Like, I'm talking, that was a big hit. Bigger than Elvis. Uh, I'm utterly convinced that the bottom ball joint sheared off on this thing and the whole territory slouched down on one corner which does make sense because everything under that front end was in about that condition i wish that's been manhandled a bit since then so it's a bit cleaner than it was it was all dirty like that and this particular guy this one arm out of everything under the car was decisively cleaner than the rest and it had been out recently so my theory is, I reckon when this thing got hit, it actually broke the ball joint and dropped it right to the ground. The other telltale sign of that is there's a tire mark on the guard liner on the inside. So I think when this got hit, it got hit very hard and squashed it down the ground and broke the ball joint clean out. Also, there's scratchings and pretty decent grooves on the inside of that rim to let me know that I reckon my theory of it actually getting... A broken front end from the accident was pretty right and somebody has decided they'll just throw this arm in because you can buy these from the wreck as cheap as buggery and actually even the new ones only about a hundred bucks um, and they've chucked that in just to get it up on its wheels and mobile again so and I think in the process of that being broken it cracked or damaged this because it would have put a hell of a lot of pressure on that hub um and since i fixed it and driving down the road and stuff like that um and i was turning when i was backing out when it finally let go uh so yeah i'm pretty sure that's and it was vibrating pretty wickedly at 80 k's an hour too um so i'm thinking this got damaged in the accident along with the ball joint they replaced that just to get it up on four wheels and to the auctions to make it appear better because they do do that kind of stuff. They will make cars appear better to get more money for them. And after fixing it and it's CD passed, it has then sheared that clean off. And um, left me in a bit of a financial hole with the vehicle. So... I've actually got this for sale at the moment because I've decided that I don't want to go any further with it. Um, it was going to be a cheap runaround, but it is not a cheap runaround anymore. Um, it now owes me, after that incident, a good chunk of change. So it's still really cheap for a territory, and it's actually in really, really good condition. So if you are interested, do sing out, because 
albeit it does need things like the rear diff bushes are gone, the front diff bushes are gone. The actual left-hand front suspension is not bad. I suspect the other radius rod will be toasted like that one is uh, was. So this whole front corner is perfect new. And I've got a ball joint and upper bushings to go for that side, which I just haven't fitted. And when I checked them the other day, they weren't that bad. I just did them on this side because I had it all out. Um, but all in all, the territory is actually in really good condition. It runs and drives nice. Obviously, pretty stock standard clunks and bangs coming from the suspension because um, nobody has spent a dime on the mechanics of this car, I think, ever. Um, but it's amazing it's still in good, fairly good condition. And, you know, 234,000 Ks, six stacker works, roof lining has been done. Um, these haven't gone all gummy, which they're pretty known for. That hasn't peeled up. The one in the center hasn't peeled up. Fits baby seats fairly well. Um, all the door locks now lock and unlock properly, so it can be locked. Which let me think, if you were to break into a car in a car park, you wouldn't actually have to break into any Falcons or Territory sitting in the car parks, because they'd just be unlocked. <laughs> Obviously it does have a little mark there and a little crack through there, but all in all, not a bad bus. But yes, she's finished, she's for sale, fairly cheap. Um, all drive, it is the four speed, not the six speed, which is handy because the six speeds are horrendously expensive when the transmissions go bang and they do that quite regularly and surprisingly the amount of people who ask me to buy the roof racks off me i'm like sure you can buy the roof racks comes with a car attached to the bottom of them <laughs> anyway i thought i'd give you an update on this this turned out fairly well not the greatest paint job um but for a rattle can a two-pack rattle can not bad and these are straight from the wreckers and all in all it was a pretty clean um, repair and um, you know the repair was good the parts were cheap it was good to do and it was fun to do because I do enjoy this occasionally um, but that really sullied it for me uh, it took the shine right off it and it's hurt me a bit financially so I've decided that I'm done with it I don't want to deal with it anymore it can be someone else's um, lovely vehicle because there's actually nothing really wrong with it, it just needs suspension washes done but I just can't afford it so here it is up for sale not bad so that's a pretty much a rundown of everything that's going on in here um, obviously been working and doing all the boot channels on this coupe here uh, and then I can start going around the side this one's nearly done actually um, then it's back onto that coupe and very soon once that roof for the XW is bare metal and beautiful. We will be hammering tongs into the XW to put a roof on it. Don't you worry your pretty little heads. Oh, so I hope you like that little update. It's going to be a bonus video. And the tank is making progress. It's looking lovely. So everything is going rather well. Gone and done something rather rash. Um, also, brand new windscreen. That was supply and fit and removal of the old windscreen. It was two hundred and fifty-three dollars. I thought that was pretty good. Um, and it was pretty pretty cheap. Oh, one of the downsides: this territory needs four tyres. Yeah. So there's another reason why I want to go on. It's still got tread on them, but um, let's be real: they need tyres. So basically this needs its front and rear diff bushes and any other bushing that's gone in it, which it's got needs blade bushes, diff bushes, front diff bushes, and probably a radius rod on this end and four tires and the territory will be good, but I don't have the funds to do that. So and I don't need excessive amounts of vehicles. So there it is. Um if you are interested, let me know. I'm not trying to do a sales pitch, but it is better than quite a lot of territories out there for sale. Um if it is your thing, let me know. Uh, so I'll see you around, chaps.